they should look at you and they should say, I don't really get it, I don't understand it, but somehow I know that God exists because it's right there. And here's something that was crazy in Jesus' life. I was going through the Gospels this week, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to find a place where Jesus ate alone. Where he was just by himself. I couldn't find it. Jesus, in the Gospels, never ate alone. You know what that tells me about Jesus? That the example that he set for us shows us that we are built as relational people. To enter into groups so we study the word together. To enter into discipleship relationships with one another. And to friend sinners. And you know what? A lot of people think, well, I shouldn't hang around sinners because they're a bad influence on my life. The problem with that is this, that doesn't follow Jesus' example. You don't have to worry about the influence that sinners have on you if you're living in the divine nature of God. Because his divine power has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. Here's the problem. You know why we fall and get trapped in sin all the time? Because we aren't really living in the divine power of God. The divine power should give you such a strength that people change their behavior because you're present. The divine power of God should allow you to walk into an environment and people start making different choices just because you're there. The divine power of God should allow you to speak life into an environment that is full of darkness. That's what Jesus Christ calls us to do. And so as we walk along and become disciples and protégés of Jesus Christ, we should see miracles happen on a regular basis. And one of the things that Jesus did is he broke bread and he drank from the cup and shared it with his disciples. And he told them, do this in remembrance of me. Now if you think about who was sitting at the table when Jesus got ready to take communion, with the disciples at the Last Supper. Around the table was somebody who was going to betray Jesus, deny Jesus, lie about Jesus, scatter from Jesus. All this crazy stuff. The disciples, the ones who lived with Jesus, who walked with Jesus, who learned from Jesus, were the ones that fled. Now, I was thinking about this last night, and I thought, you know, The ones who were at the table with Jesus essentially were still sinners, as we too are sinners, and it's only by the blood of Jesus Christ that you have freedom from sin. We too are invited into the divine nature of God as sinners, but Jesus Christ overcame the world so that you too can overcome the world. And what he's asking of us this morning as we prepare to do what he told us to do. He said, come to the table and do this in remembrance of me. When you take communion, one of the things that should happen is you should recognize that you are participating in a supernatural event. The blood of Jesus Christ shed for the forgiveness of your sins the body of the Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. And the challenge that I have for you this morning, Freddie's going to come, and he's going to be sharing a song this morning. And as he shares the song, I want to give you the opportunity to get up from where you are. Everybody go to the right. Come by the table. You're going to get your communion element, uh, your, the juice and the bread, and you're going to come back. And I do not want you to take them yet. I want you to bring them back because I want you to have some time to reflect on what it really means to do this in remembrance of me. And Mission Church, you do not have to be a member. You don't even have to be a regular attender to participate in communion at Mission Church. All I ask is what Jesus asked of us, is that you would recognize that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and that you would take an opportunity to make sure that you this morning, your heart is right in relationship with God. If there's sin that's separating you from God, it's as simple as saying, Jesus Christ, come into my life afresh and anew this morning and remove the patterns of the world 
the sin, the darkness, the grunge, the worldliness. Make me pure and clean. Prepare me. Get all the garbage out so that I can come to the table and participate in the divine power of God. But there's more to it this morning. I want to ask you this morning to open yourself up that God would take you to a place in worship this morning where maybe you haven't been for a while. Where you would realize that He is saying specifically to you, follow me. Become my protege. Let me fill you with the Holy Spirit. Let me strengthen you the way you've never been strengthened before. Let me prep you so that as we walk together this week, miracles will happen in the name of Jesus Christ because I'm inviting you to participate in the divine nature of God. Come with me. I don't want you to come to the table this morning and drink the cup and eat the bread and say, thanks, Jesus, for what you did for me. I want you to come to the table and I want you to get the elements and I want you to bring them back to you and I want you to realize this is one-on-one time with you and the Holy Spirit. And I want you to realize this morning that he has something that he wants to say to you and I don't know what it is. But his word promises us that his, his mercies are new every morning. The power that he wants to give you today is a power that you haven't experienced before. It's new. It's fresh. It's from the Spirit. He wants to make you strong. He wants to heal you from sin. He wants to break strongholds. He wants you to get out of a status quo pattern in your life. He wants to prep you so that you can get into relationships with people And you can study the Word of God and you can say, wow, I got to use the Scripture and I got to share this. And as I share it, strongholds are broken. Darkness is dispelled. I don't know this morning what God wants to do in your heart and in your life, but I know this. He loves you deeply and desperately this morning. He doesn't want you to stay where you are right now. He wants to move you forward. He wants you to take steps of faith that you've never experienced before, and He wants you to participate at the table in the divine nature of God. It's a miracle. And this morning, as Freddie sings, I want you to get up from your seat. I want you to go to the table, take your cup, your element, bring him back, and I want you to spend some time in worship. And when you are ready, you can drink from the cup, And you can eat the bread and know that this is the blood of Jesus Christ shed for the forgiveness of your sins, and this is his body broken for you. But when you take from the cup and when you eat the bread this morning, I want you to know that you're participating in a miracle for you. And my prayer for you this morning is it would be something special for you because you would know the very reason that God has brought you to this place this morning with the body to worship. Let's participate by getting our elements as we listen to Freddie sing and worship together. Give me a cheek, cheek. 